I wanted to start off the video showing that because I want people to know that what that man did right there or what he was trying to do, that's the type of energy that we need to be on when something like this actually happens. Now, I told myself going into doing this video, it was not going to be a triple P because of the circumstances of the sentencing that Peyton Gendron rightfully got. Although I wish he would have gotten the death penalty because that was on the table, but I'm fine with him getting life in prison without the possibility of parole. And I hope that he's put into general population because if we had it, if I had it my way with the sentencing that he has, he wouldn't make it to next week. And that's just the, that's just the facts behind it. Now, the end, like I said, the energy that that man gave that's what everyone should be given. It's just unfortunate he wasn't a little bit closer to him. And I think they probably had a feeling that this guy was getting ready to rush him. That's why a lot of them were kind of on edge and prepared to jump and grab him just in case. But you know what? I probably would have been one of the ones that would have looked the other way if, that, if it came down to it and be like, I didn't see anything. Because trust and believe what that guy was about to do to Peyton Gendron was tame compared to what Peyton Gendron did to 10 people back in May of last year at Topps Grocery Store in Buffalo, New York, and all the other ones that survived their injuries. Those who survived or those who didn't even get hurt are going to be traumatized by that incident from that day from him. And the way that that woman was addressing him, it kind of reminded me of the sister of one of Jeffrey Dahmer's victims. He even kind of looks like Jeffrey Dahmer a little bit right here. It's kind of crazy. But let me go ahead now and get into the article itself. The 19 year old white man, I'm glad they finally address him as a white man because they, you know, they'll be pressed to say that he's a teenager who killed 10 people in a racist mass shooting at a grocery store in a predominantly black area of Buffalo last May cried and said he regretted his actions as he was sentenced to life in prison during an emotional court hearing on Wednesday. He's not sorry, at least not as sorry as he's going to be, because last year that energy that he had was way different compared to how he's talking right now. It was completely a complete 360, a complete 180 from where he's at right now. He goes on to say, I'm very sorry for all the pain I forced the victims and their families to suffer through. I'm very sorry for stealing the lives of your loved ones. I cannot express how much I regret all the decisions I made leading up to my actions on May 14th. Peyton Gendron wearing an orange jumpsuit and shackles set in court. And do you know how painful that has to be for the family to have to listen to the BS and filth and vomit, the verbal vomit that had to spill out of his mouth? Because he didn't feel this way back in May of last year. His energy was way different even leading up to that day. And on that day was not of remorse. The best thing that he could have did that day was turn right around and go home and pretend that he wasn't even about to do what he did. But he had a one track mission. And that was to kill as many black people in that grocery store as he could. And unfortunately, he killed 10. I did, I did a terrible thing that day. I shot and killed people because they were black. Looking back now, I can't believe I actually did it. I believe what I read online and acted out of hate. I know I can't take it back, but wish I could. And I don't want anyone to be inspired by me and what I did. And the crazy part about it is it's going to be someone out there that probably is. And even if they aren't inspired by you, they don't need the inspiration. If someone doesn't like or hates black people and they want to carry something out, they're going to do it or they're going to try. 
The statement came during the sentencing hearing for Gendron, who pleaded guilty in November to one count of domestic act of terrorism motivated by hate, 10 counts of first degree murder, three counts of attempted murder, and a weapons possession charge for the mass shooting at Topps Friendly Markets on May 14, 2022. A number of victims' families members spoke emotionally Wednesday about how the mass shooting had changed their lives. At one point, Gendron took off his glasses and began crying during the testimony from the victims' families. At another point, a man in a gray sweatshirt, shirt, which you saw in the video, rushed at Gendron in court but was quickly blocked by security and Gendron was taken out of the courtroom. After a short break, Gendron returned to the courtroom and Erie County Court Judge Susan Egan restarted the hearing. We cannot have that in the courtroom, Egan said. We must conduct ourselves appropriately because we are all better than that. Well, you got to understand, in that emotional state right there, you don't know how people are going to act. And you got to think, this is the first time that the family of the loved ones who lost their lives that day have come in contact face to face with him. This is their first time. This is going to be the only time they get to address him in person. So if in that moment that man felt compelled to do what he did, hey, it is what it is. I'm not mad at him. He most likely knew he's going to be holding contempt of court. He probably going, you know, pay a fine. But at that point, it doesn't matter. Even if he wasn't able to let off one hit on on this individual, which I wish he was able to. At least he tried. We can't say that he didn't try. So, I, again, I'm not mad or holding anything against this man for doing what he felt he had in his heart that he needed to do. In the end, the judge sentenced Gendry to life in prison on each of the terrorism and murder charges and offered a stern rebuke of him. There is no place for you or your ignorant, hateful and evil ideologies in a civilized society, she said. There could be no mercy for you, no understanding, no second chances. The damage you have caused is too great and the people you have hurt are too valuable to this community. You will never see the light of day as a free man ever again. Erie County District Attorney John J. Flynn said after the court sentence put legal closure on the case, but not on the broader issues. It certain t certainly does not put any closure on what we need to do as a society and a community going forward, Flynn said. Justice was done with a small J today, but we still have a big J of justice to do. And then it goes on more into what happened when it came to the rushing of the guy. I'm going to read it as a matter of fact, because I want to see, because there's actually some t text behind this. It says the attempted attack on Gendron came during a particularly intense victim impact statement by Barbara Maps, the sister of Catherine Massey, a 72 year old who was killed in the attack. I want to personally to I want personally to choke you, Maps said in a loud voice. Your your little punk ass decided to come here to kill black people. Flynn said the man will not be charged with a crime, explaining he did not want to compound the tragedy. OK, well, that's good. That's good. As he shouldn't. It says other families of victims offered more somber memories of their loved ones and criticisms of Gendron's violent actions and hateful ideology many of the victims family members voiced that they wish for gendron to be sentenced to life in prison rather than a death penalty so the shooter will have to suffer with his thoughts for the rest of his life hopefully the rest of his life doesn't last for the next 50 years or so one day i hope you find it in your heart to apologize to those families wayne jones son of the of celestine cheney said in court i pray to god they do not kill you said brian tally family member of shooting victim geraldine tally you need to be known worldwide. I forgive you. Oh, God, you could have left that part out. But I forgive you not for your sake, but for mine and for this black community. You, you, Sir, you could have left that out. Now I'm starting to sound like Kid Gravity. You could have left the um, the forgive part out because there's there is absolutely no way. I don't care in what aspect you felt you needed to forgive him in. There would have been no forgiveness on this side of the uh, on this side of the mountain. Christopher Brayton, who said he was shot in his leg, said he saw dead bodies on the floor as he was led out of the supermarket to the hospital. The visions haunt me every day, Brayton said, adding he continues to suffer from night terrors and post-traumatic stress disorder from the shooting. Zanita Everhart, whose son Zaire Goodman was shot and injured, said her son has survivor's guilt. He is dealing with the pain that I as a mother cannot bear, Everhart said. On that day, this terrorist, which is the perfect choice of words to uh, the description of him, made the choice that the value of a black man meant nothing to him. Whatever the sentence is that Gendrys receives, it will never be enough. Michelle Spite, 
who said she lost her aunt and her cousin in the shooting, says she hopes Gendron is haunted every day and every night. You came to Buffalo with hatred and anger in your heart, Spite said, also speaking on the behalf of her other family members. Yeah. That's all well and everything, but I do want him to suffer. I think we all want that to happen for him, and I we I think we all believe that's what should happen, and hopefully that is definitely the case wherever it is that he goes. Gen pop, nothing less. <laughs>